So my full name is Jose Eduardo Torres Tama Alfaro, if we're to go really full. So it's Jose uh, Eduardo Torres, so T-O-R-R-E-S hyphen T-A-M-A. When I became a U.S. citizen, I re-hyphenated them. When I entered the United States, much like now, while well, I didn't enter through Ellis Island, much like many immigrants who had longer names, it was chopped up to Jose Torres, Jose E. Torres, which to me was a direct violation, my first culture clash with the United States of amnesia. Um, and we'll get into why I call it that, because it's a system that likes to seduce its people to embrace forgetting. Uh, as an artist uh, from the Latin American tradition, it's all about remembering, remembering history. So I've been in New Orleans, metaphorically speaking, about 250 years. In this incarnation, I've been here since 1984. I entered to the Port of Miami uh, in 1968 at the age of seven, uh, when the country was on fire, much like it is right now. Um, so MLK had been assassinated in April. Um, RFK got assassinated in early, late October, early, early November, and they were about to basically remember the fifth anniversary of JFK's assassination from 1963. So um, 1968, very hot year to, to enter the United States. Now we entered as um, resident aliens, right? So I've always embraced the idea of the alien, of the extraterrestrial, because I am an extraterrestrial. I'm basically here doing uh, uh, anthropological studies in the United States in this incarnation as a brown body, um, looking at how it treats its black and brown people because historically, the legacy of the United States, I always say that this country, it's been built on a lie and it's a real tough situation for a lot of people to believe. So uh, I always tell people, I'm like left, left of Howard Zinn and Noam Chomsky and uh, simply because I'm a studied individual and I think in the Latin American tradition, as I expressed earlier, it is the job of the artist, the poet, the painter, the performer, to speak the people's truth and really cut through the lies. So um, I've always expressed very much like Langston Hughes, America has never been America to me. In addition, um, I always challenge the idea of the United States just taking hostage the moniker of America because America belongs to all of us. I was born in South America, I was raised in North America. I often tell most North Americans, people here in the United States, that I'm more American than they are. In addition, I'm also Quechua native um, from Ecuador. Most of us are Quechua. A lot of people know about the Incas from Peru, but I'm a Quechua native. I'm also Spanish, and Tama is a, um, a German name. So I often refer to myself as Uber Latino, um, because I am. <laughs> And I'm a mixture, I'm a hybrid, you know, and that's the nature of most of us in, in the hemispheric Americas. We're hybrid because of the European invasion. Uh, and that's something that's very important to recognize is uh, I was just performing and I bring forth the fact that while New Orleans is interested in celebrating its tricentennial, I question what is it going to really celebrate? Is it celebrating Bienville coming up on the Mississippi River, eventually setting up the slave port Catholic City? Let's remember the slave port Catholic City, because the Catholic Church abetted slavery as well, uh, and the French and the Spanish both created the slave port Catholic City in the flesh trading and selling of black bodies to establish the commerce of the Mississippi, right? So what is it that's being celebrated? Because these are sacred lands, these are native lands as well. So I mentioned in the piece, are we going to invite, is the mayor and the city elders, are they going to invite the ghost of the Atacapa, the ghost of the Tunica, the ghost of the Chirimara, right? These are the ghosts of the tribes that were eradicated. So that's why I call it the United States of Amnesia, because the myth of freedom has always been bigger in the United States of Amnesia than the actual freedom specially afforded to its people of color. And you, we are standing steep, we are sitting steep in a slave port city. You're not gonna read that in the tourist brochures, right? Jackson Square. You're not gonna read that uh, any slave revolt leaders, they would sever their heads, put them on 10 foot pole and create installations of their heads there to deter any of slave revolts. Unfortunately, that information doesn't get to the tourist brochures but it's the job of the artist to bring forth the information that exists. And for me, that's my job. And for the people who have reconstructed New Orleans, a lot of people do not realize that this city, during this entire anti-immigrant hysteria that was exacerbated to, no, to unprecedented heights during the Bush administration because of 
uh, that's when it really spawned again. And there's been, you know, previous episodes. It's not like nothing new. You know, a lot of times people think, oh, this is all new, and look at all of this, you know, anti-immigrant nationalistic Chinese Exclusion Act, Japanese internment. I have a character, right, uh, Pachuco, he dresses like this, he goes, orale, no, it's not like this has happened before. Just look at the Indian Removal Act. Indian Removal Act, signed in by your Andrew Jackson, right, your president who was the Indian killer. He hated the native people. I mean, they were straight up Indian removal, like they could have called it Operation Iraqi Freedom, right? You know, and um, so Pachuco gives this, uh, he says, I'm going to give you a brief history of the abuse of power in the United States of Amnesia. And it's only going to be a brief history because if I was to present an extensive narrative on abuse of power with the United States, ooh, we'd be here a long time. It would be like one of those Ken Burns PBS Civil War series. They keep going on and on and on and on. How does that white boy get so much money for those droll documentaries? No, I ask myself. And PBS. Right, so that kind of thing. And that's why I also gravitate to, to comedy, right? So within the performance art nature of what I do, there's always comedic relief. Of course, there's conceptual movement. There's all kinds of things. And because I come from literature, there's poetic pieces that happen, right? But because I also come from the visual arts, I really engage in um, conceptual pieces. So what do I see as a solution? My children. Darius and Diego Torres Copeland. They just performed with us, 10 and 7. Their mama sings with the opera, so they've been in the, in the, they were in part of the children's opera chorus. I see hybrids, I see the conscious, ju the conscious youth that were on Bernie Sanders' side. Right? I see those people, the, the millennials, the ones who are like not putting up with this nonsense because this is the last scream of a dying patriarchal dinosaur. And actually, it's an opportunity rather than how dark it's gotten.